Animate Project 2 Talking Kiosk Interface Stage 1 Working with Symbols Symbol instances are copies of symbols that you place on the stage. A regular graphic object adds to the overall file weight every time you use it on the stage, but a symbol only counts once no matter how many times you use it and that can make a much smaller file size. You should have downloaded the Atrium zip file and expanded that in your WIP folder and we will now choose to create a new file. We're going to choose Air for desktop as the option in the type file and accept the defaults. We'll resize that later. Next, save your file as Atrium Kiosk and you can add your initials to it at this point. You will be turning this file in at the end of the lesson. I've already done this so I'm simply going to replace the file that I created earlier. We can use the Animate tools to draw complex custom artwork but the graphics that we're going to use were previously created in Illustrator. We are going to go to File, Import, Import to Stage, select to import the interface Adobe Illustrator file, and in the Options box that opens, we are going to hide advanced options. You can look at the incompatibility if you'd like, but let's just hide those advanced options. And there's an explanation of everything. On page 84 in your book, we are going to change some of the settings that come up as the default. We are going to choose vector outlines for text. We don't need to make any changes to the text. We are going to check the set stage size to the same as Illustrator Artboard and then Import. Fit your stage in the window and click to the side to deselect everything. In your library panel, expand the folder so that you can look at everything. If it doesn't all pop up for you, go ahead and expand everything. You don't need to expand the, the girl folder, but you'll see all of the information, the bitmap images, the graphic symbols, and the movie clips that are included. Collapse that back up again and make sure you save your file. We can also import files into the library. So next we're going to go to File, File, Import to Library, and select the Mouths file and open that. The options in this dialog box are very much the same, but we do not have the option to reset the stage size. Go ahead and click Import on that and select the Mouths AI file in the library panel to see a preview of the file. You can drag down to show your preview panel. We have a number of assets now in the library panel. The mouths graphic contains eight groups of graphics, the different mouth shapes that you will use to synchronize the character to the sound file. For the process to work, we need to separate each of those mouth shapes into a distinct symbol. Make sure you have your selection tool and double click the mouths AI symbol icon to enter into the symbol. Zoom in so that you can see all of them. Each symbol has its own stage within this grouping. If you double click the symbol icon in the library panel, you enter symbol editing mode for that symbol. Click away from the artwork to deselect everything and then click the top left mouth shape to select the group but not the word. Right click the selected artwork and choose Convert to Symbol. 
in the dialog box that pops up, name that symbol Mouth1. You're going to change the type from Movie Clip to Graphic and select the center for the proxy point and say OK. Mouth1 now appears in your library panel. Click the second shape, press F8 if that works for you, which will convert this to a symbol. The Convert to Symbol dialog box remembers the last used settings, so we already have type is graphic and the center proxy is selected and name this Mouth2. Continue to convert the rest of the mouth shapes into symbols. Click Scene 1 in the Edit bar to return to the main stage and center the stage back on your screen. Using the Selection tool, click the mouth shape on the stage to select it. In the Timeline panel, click the New Layer button to add a new layer. Name that layer Mouth. Zoom in on the girl's face and in the mouth layer select and drag an instant of mouth 1 onto the stage. Drag the placed instance in the same position as the mouth group. Your guides should help you line it up. Click in the I column to the right of the mouths layer to temporarily turn it off. Select the mouth in the girl layer and hit delete to get rid of it and then show the mouth layer again. We're going to temporarily leave the mouth situation alone and if you'll pick up your hand tool we're going to slide over to the start over area and we're going to create a button symbol. Buttons are one of the three main symbol types in Animate. They're interactive assets that change when a user interacts with them. A button symbol, as most of us know, has four states. There is an up state, which is the idle or default. The over state occurs when the mouse pointer rolls over a button. The down state occurs when a user clicks on the button. And the hit state defines the size of the hot spot on the button. This file includes five buttons. Four of them were created as symbols in the Illustrator artwork and one was imported onto the stage as part of the group. We're going to select with our selection tool the group containing the words Start Over. Press F8 if that works for you or right click the group and choose Convert Symbol. In the resulting box you're going to name this button Start Over and make sure that you don't leave just a space you need to actually put in that underscore. We're going to choose button for the type and the center registration point on the proxy. We created the symbol from an object on the stage so the property panel shows that the selection is a new symbol. Double click the start over button on the stage to enter into the symbol. We're now going to be editing in place. Other objects on the stage are visible but they're screened out and we can't pick them up and access them. We're going to create the different states for this symbol. In the timeline panel we now have the up, over, down, and hit. Right click the over frame of layer 1 and insert a keyframe. Make sure that that keyframe is still selected and then double click the words Start Over. We're going to enter into that group. Double click now any of the letters that make up the group. With the individual letter shapes selected, we're going to change the fill color. So pick up the fill color swatch 
and choose a medium blue. We can now click the scene 1 in the edit bar to return to the main stage. We're going to go up to control and enable simple buttons to test what we've done. Drag your mouse over the text and you'll see that the text now changes from black to blue. We now have created our over state. But what can we will also find is that in between the letters is a dead area. It doesn't change unless we're over part of the object. Choose control, enable simple buttons to turn that option off. Double click the start over button on the stage again to enter the symbol area. This time select the hit frame Press F6 to insert a keyframe. Choose the Rectangle tool from the Tools panel and in the Properties panel make sure you deselect the Object Drawing toggle. So it's already turned off. Set the Stroke to None and a contrasting color that you can see for the fill color. And then draw a rectangle that covers the entire contents of the button. It doesn't matter what color you choose because you're not going to see this. Next, select Scene 1 to return to the main stage. In Control, enable simple buttons and with your selection tool, roll over the area and you will see that no matter where you roll over now you do not have those dead areas as long as you are within that established area that you just created. Save your file.